Hi! Why do we have in almost all of our radio equipment today's so-called switching mode power supplies? And uh, what uh, is the difference between a switching mode uh, power supply and an old school linear power supply? So we want to try to understand a little bit uh, the difference between this both uh, types of uh, power supplies and uh, yeah we uh, want to understand why uh, manufacturers always using this uh, kind of uh, modern power supplies and uh, yeah, uh, why do they have uh, a so bad reputation? So what is it all about? So today um, we want to have a rough view uh, into the uh, switching mode uh, power supply world. We can't cover all, but uh, we try to get a basic understanding of uh, what is going on. We want to do some uh, experiments and then we might be able to uh, understand what is all behind this switching mode power supply. Yeah and here on the bench a typical switching mode uh, power supply and uh, it uh, all looks a little bit confusing but um, we will figure it out um, but uh, the most important uh, point what uh, we uh, directly recognize is this really uh, tiny um, transformer so this here is uh, the power transformer as uh, we know it from our linear um, power supplies as well, but uh, if you remember a uh, transformer in a linear power supply is uh, really a big uh, beast and uh, this here is uh, really tiny and uh, that is uh, one of the most uh, important uh, differences obviously that uh, we only need a little transformer and not a big beast, a big heavy beast. So obviously uh, the first what uh, we recognize is it is smaller, it is not that heavy and uh, you know we do not need so much space inside a uh, radio or any equipment where we need a power supply. And that is uh, obviously uh, the first uh, impression um, when we see a power supply, a so-called switching mode power supply as uh, we have it here on the bench today. Okay, one uh, easy uh, comparison is, um, well, we see that uh, this is really a, a small uh, power supply or a transformer uh, itself. And uh, we find on uh, Wikipedia, for instance, uh, a 4 kilowatt power supply with uh, old school uh, linear uh, transformer uh, would have a weight of 25 kilogram and uh, if we design a power supply in the switching mode uh, technology then the same power supply with, which uh, is able to deliver 4 kilowatt uh, of power will only have a weight of approximately 500 gram and uh, that is really the huge difference. So you need less material, so you really have uh, a lower white and uh, it is smaller. But what is the trick? So how does it work? So there must be a reason why we uh, can uh, put a small trafo like uh, a small transformer like this into the power supply which is simply doing the same job like a big beast. 
Well, the trick used is basically very simple. So normally we uh, have a line uh, frequency of about uh, 50 or uh, 60 Hertz depending in uh, which part uh, of the world we are living and um, with uh, 50 or uh, 60 uh, cycles into a transformer there uh, is a limited uh, power which uh, can be uh, transferred to um, the other side. Uh, but uh, simply with uh, increasing the frequency the uh, magnetic uh, core material inside this transformer is able to uh, carry or to transfer more power and that is the key. So we simply need to increase the frequency on which the transformer is working and then we can simply deliver more power in uh, the secondary part of our uh, transformer. Well, but how does it work with uh, this higher frequency? I mean, we all know this situation here. So we uh, have our mains uh, here uh, in Europe, most likely 230 volt um, AC with uh, 50 hertz and uh, in the US it is uh, 60 hertz and uh, there it is I believe 110 I don't know exactly but uh, that is what we know and uh, a normal or uh, our um, linear uh, transformers are uh, a bit like uh, this here so we have our uh, input um, which is uh, our uh, primary site and uh, there we have let let us uh, say 230 volt 50 hertz and then we get uh, it uh, to the secondary side uh, converted let me say to 20 volt uh, AC and then we uh, have our rectifier and then our uh, filter capacitors and such and that is what we know and uh, yeah when I now say uh, we simply need to, to increase the frequency to the uh, transformer to simply reduce the uh, size of uh, the transformer hmm, how can it work I mean we only have here uh, 50 Hertz uh, from our main main side so how can we increase uh, the frequency to be able to reduce our transformer and uh, getting the same uh, power on uh, the secondary side well the trick is very simple I mean uh, here we have uh, what uh, we had with uh, our uh, old school linear uh, transformer technology and uh, we need to change our circuitry a little bit to increase uh, finally the frequency used in the transformer. I mean we have here our transformer as well but we do it now a little bit different so we uh, take our three, uh, 230 volt mains we rectify it directly out uh, of our mains uh, plug and uh, or wall plug however you call it and uh, then uh, we have here at uh, the filter cap um, yeah, it is uh, approximately uh, 320 or 325 volt, which uh, will be available here then uh, at the filter cap. And uh, now we supply this um, DC because yeah, we have now DC and we feed the DC here into our transformer. 
which is uh, at least uh, this transformer here uh, in our or on our uh, as, um, on our board here and um, but then we have a transistor and uh, transistor is basically switched over a low uh, resistor to ground so now nothing would happen because uh, we have a DC and DC into a coil or into a transformer so nothing uh, would happen and this transistor is a NPN type and uh, this uh, would uh, be high resistance as it is here and nothing would happen so what we need is uh, a second uh, little uh, trick we need to supply here you know a signal to the base of the transistor therefore we have a little oscillator circuit um, which is uh, today integrated in uh, IC and uh, this oscillator circuit is supplying uh, a little frequency here to our base and this frequency of course is now a higher fre frequency let me say between 60 or maybe 120 kilohertz so now uh, we are changing from uh, 50 uh, hertz which uh, we have it here with uh, our linear transformer we are now switching this transistor with uh, 70 kilohertz or 120 kilohertz it depends on the design but uh, in any case now we have here a higher frequency where we uh, feed our transistor with okay and uh, to make it a little bit more clear so of course this is an integrated uh, circle and it is at least an oscillator which is uh, feeding um, I uh, have uh, put here uh, 70 kilohertz uh, onto this uh, diagram and we are feeding now with uh, 70 kilohertz uh, transistor and that means the uh, frequency here in our um, primary uh, side of uh, our transformer will now switch with uh, 70 kilohertz so now we have increased the frequency and what we heard before is uh, simply uh, that when we increase the frequency to our transformer then we can reduce the size and the weight of uh, this uh, transformer and uh, yeah we need uh, less space and uh, what have we but this integrated uh, uh, circle circuits can uh, much more can do much more for us so um as I already said we have here a very uh, little resistor and uh, this is a current uh, sensor and uh, we uh, can take uh, the voltage here from uh, our current uh, sensor and uh, if um, the power con consumption gets too high then we will have here a higher voltage which uh, will get uh, a feedback here into the IC and uh, if you know the voltage at uh, this sender, sensor is increasing is uh, getting uh, bigger than one volt then this uh, IC uh, with uh, its uh, internal protection circuit is easily able to switch down um, you know the oscillation and then you have a kind uh, of self-protection and uh, beside that uh, we also have a protection uh, 
uh, loop here on this way here and then uh, we can uh, maybe have uh, already a look here onto the uh, secondary side because um, the transformer uh, itself is exactly the same what uh, we have with uh, our, our old school uh, linear technology so um, our primary side and our secondary side um, we it is exactly the same what we have uh, with uh, the linear technique and uh, here we have then our um, our uh, own uh, little um, yeah pads where we have our different uh, voltages and uh, beside that we can control um, uh, the load so if the load is getting too high on um, our secondary side we can report this uh, high load to the input side and we can uh, tell this IC hey the power which is drawn is too high something must be wrong maybe a short and uh, we can give this information to um, an error, uh, error amplifier here in our IC and when the uh, error amplifier exceeds uh, value then you know the oscillation is switched off as well and so you know it is really a, a nice way to control the load side um, so if there is for instance uh, a short or what have we then we can simply um, switch it uh, off and uh, nothing happens to our complete circuit yeah and back to our PCB here uh, so we can uh, see this uh, white line here and uh, this white line uh, clearly indicates um, the uh, primary side and uh, the secondary side and uh, this is very important because uh, this is really live so that means uh, we have our 230 uh, volts here on uh, this side or rectified our uh, 325 uh, volt DC so that uh, is our live side and uh, it is uh, different in um, uh, the ground so we have a different uh, ground on uh, both sides so that is very important uh, to know and uh, you can find here this uh, little optocoupler so that is uh, what we uh, have at least uh, here so this is a feedback uh, from our load side so if there is for instance uh, maybe a short then this uh, optocoupler is reporting this short here to the arrow amplifier in our IC and uh, the IC can then simply switch off here the oscillation and then you know there uh, is no energy which uh, will be transferred in uh, the secondary side of uh, our um, uh, power um, supply and therefore you really see uh, this is optocoupler so there is uh, no galvanic um, yeah a connection here uh, from the uh, secondary to the primary or um, opposite side around so that is the reason why you can see uh, this white line here going um, through this or under this uh, optocoupler so we uh, definitely have our both sides and um, well you find here the uh, IC so this is uh, our oscillator and uh, you find here as well uh, the transistor so this is our switching uh, transistor which uh, is doing uh, the job and uh, switching finally here our transformer and um, then um, 
yeah, you have here our main uh, input and uh, we have here our rectifier down here and uh, we have here our filter cap and uh, that is uh, what it is all about. Well, and here on uh, Wikipedia we find a much better uh, drawing of uh, what uh, I've tried uh, to show you. So this is a complete uh, switching uh, power supply and uh, you find here all the components, uh, components which I have shown you. So here is our main uh, input, so here is our rectifier, our filter and then our switching transistor and uh, of course uh, our transformer and uh, at least uh, our um, our load site uh, where we can um, connect all uh, our uh, load to and of course we have here our feedback line uh, where we uh, have uh, the uh, precision um, power or voltage monitoring device um, which is uh, at least um, a kind of Zener diode. We will look uh, into that uh, in a bit. And then uh, we have our optocoupler and uh, the optocoupler is giving the error signal to our uh, oscillator IC which uh, is if there is an overload which is uh, able to yeah, switch off uh, the oscillation to the base of our switching transistor and then of course our transformer will not deliver any power to our load side. So that is at least um, how it works. Okay, so let us go in uh, some experiments. Okay, here our circuit is uh, connected to um, yeah, mains uh, to do some uh, tests, uh, but uh, let me say and uh, let me remind you that uh, you always should use uh, isolation transformer. So um, it is connected all to my isolation transformer that is very important um, to reduce uh, you know the risk of uh, an electrical shock so therefore be careful don't do it if you do not know what you are doing okay so uh, let's have um, a look so uh, as we have uh, seen it here on our diagram so we want to check uh, the voltage here at uh, our filter cap and uh, as we said uh, the filter cap is uh, this here and uh, we have down here a test point where we should read approximately 200, uh, 320 uh, volt uh, DC so when I go down here to the test uh, point yeah let's uh, see what we can read yeah you can easily see it um, 319 uh, close enough so that is the voltage um, I can read here at uh, our test point okay so this is a power supply the schematic of our power supply uh, and uh, we uh, checked here the voltage at uh, test point uh, 1 which uh, was our uh, 320 volt and uh, you can easily see that uh, this uh, voltage is supplied here to our transformer and we have here our switching uh, transistor and uh, of course we have here our oscillator I see and now uh, we want to check uh, at uh, test point 3 if this here is uh, at least uh, oscillating so that is uh, what we want uh, to see and um, yeah I've already uh, connected here 
my uh, probe to the uh, test point uh, 3 which uh, is at least the output of uh, our oscillator and is now supplying our switching transistor and uh, let's see what we can find there. Yeah, and that is uh, our output um, but uh, what we can see here is uh, not uh, the right size so I will um, put it in this way because uh, now we uh, can here see three uh, yeah it is it is a kind uh, of a spike so uh, you see uh, this um, signal here is very narrow um, yeah and that is uh, because there is no load and that is another very very nice uh, behavior of uh, this uh, circuit because it is a pulse white modulation circuit that means if there is no load uh, we can uh, only give very little tiny pulses into the transformer because you know there is no um, huge power consumption um, at uh, the load side so therefore we only need this little peaks but it might be of interest what uh, the frequency is and therefore we just uh, ask our uh, scope and now we can read it down there so the frequency is 56 kilohertz so in um, our case uh, the design uh, is set to 56 uh, kilohertz. The design um, is uh, depending on uh, what we uh, have here set to. Uh, let me let me uh, show it here. So this uh, both uh, components are responsible for the frequency so you can always set uh, the frequency of uh, your uh, oscillator by simply um, designing this both uh, components okay and uh, this here is out of uh, the data sheet of our pulse white uh, modulator so our oscillator IC and uh, you find here this both uh, component so the resistor and uh, the capacitor uh, connected to the IC and uh, you find down below here you find uh, the formula um, to you know design or adjust uh, the frequency you uh, wanna have in your power supply Okay, so that means obviously uh, there is not uh, much power um, drawn uh, on the load side, so therefore uh, we have only this uh, little uh, spikes here uh, which uh, is telling us okay, uh, we put some energy into the transformer, but uh, there is no heavy load, so we do not put. Uh, in uh, a wider pulse for uh, more energy um, but uh, yeah let us uh, simply uh, investigate uh, what's happening if we increase the load okay this uh, power supply uh, definitely have more than uh, only one uh, output uh, voltage so they are different for uh, different uh, purposes uh, anyways I uh, have just chosen for our example here one uh, output and uh, we want to investigate a little bit uh, this uh, output and uh, what uh, will uh, happening if we are increasing the load so what will be the changing and uh, yeah so let's see what we can what we can find 
so therefore I have connected my uh, electronic load to this uh, output and uh, you can uh, see up here so this here is the uh, output voltage which uh, we have here at uh, the terminal um, that means it is uh, 12.4 volt which uh, is on um, the load side uh, available but uh, as we can uh, see as well um, we uh, do not have load here but uh, anyways uh, so let me uh, adjust here I don't know let us uh, set um, it to 50 milli uh, ampere so 50 milli but uh, still it is uh, not uh, switched on uh, I have to switch it uh, on but uh, therefore let us uh, watch our scope screen okay so let me simply now switch on my electronic load and uh, yeah here we are so now you uh, can uh, see that um, we have a load so uh, the electronic load is drawing uh, power and uh, you simply see that now uh, our IC so the pulse uh, width um, modulator uh, put more energy here in our uh, transformer and therefore uh, the circuit is able to deliver uh, more power so let me see if I can uh, trigger it here a little bit uh, better um, yeah okay I think that uh, is uh, good enough to see uh, what's uh, going on here so with load uh, simply we have a, a bigger duty cycle and if I switch off again the load you see uh, that it is uh, changing and uh, the same uh, will uh, happening if I reduce the load so you can see uh, how the uh, pulse uh, with uh, modulator is working so as more I'm uh, increasing uh, the load uh, as more uh, you see uh, the changing in the uh, output but uh, as we already said uh, another advantage of our circuit is that uh, we are able to report uh, overload via our optocoupler here okay so if um, we have too much uh, voltage uh, power consumption on uh, the load side then um, our IC over oh you can see it our our oscillator uh, IC here should be uh, able to uh, switch off here our pin 6 which uh, was uh, at least our uh, test point uh, 3 where we have our scope connected to and uh, this here should uh, be able to switch uh, off or down if the load uh, is too high and therefore uh, we have uh, this nice uh, component here so this uh, is um, at least a precision Wiener diode but it is not only a precision Wiener uh, diode it is a, a precision adjustable Wiener diode it is a TL431 uh, and uh, you can uh, see here uh, the symbol um, of our component and uh, what you find this here looks like uh, a normal Zener diode but we have here the reference uh, input that means that uh, we can set at least um, the Zener voltage uh, if you like by uh, simply um, adjusting the reference 
so therefore you uh, can do it uh, like uh, this here so this is uh, application for it and you can set here with your resistors uh, at least the voltage which uh, is supplied here to your reference uh, input and uh, with uh, changing um, here uh, the voltage and um, of course uh, depending of the input voltage you can set at least your senior uh, voltage at the output and the output of course is uh, the cathode here which is here called uh, VKA which is um, the uh, Wiener uh, output uh, voltage and here in the schematic of our power supply we find here our TL4341 um, in a very uh, similar uh, application so we have here our reference uh, input and uh, we uh, will get here a supply voltage here from our secondary side so we have here a rectifier a diode and a filter cap and we have here uh, at least so that is a 5 uh, volt uh, output so that is a 5 volt tap from our um, transformer and we uh, see here our 5 volt delivered to our reference uh, scener and uh, with this scener you can adjust a voltage from uh, 2.5 up to 36 uh, volt always depending on the input voltage and depending on uh, the resistor uh, value uh, as we have seen it in the uh, application node and uh, yeah therefore this here is of course uh, set uh, to um, yeah to to a setting where the Wiener di diode is uh, directly recognizing a voltage drop because uh, if the voltage drop at our output of our load side I'm not talking here about uh, the load of our Zyner diode I'm uh, talking about um, the output of uh, our output terminal so where we put all the supply lines uh, to and if there the load is uh, too high then uh, you would uh, directly recognize a voltage drop and uh, this uh, voltage drop can be recognized here by our uh, precision uh, senior uh, diode and then uh, we get here uh, information to our uh, optocoupler and uh, the optocoupler will at least uh, give let me see if we can see it here yeah here our pin 2 of our uh, IC is the arrow amplifier and if uh, you know the optocoupler is delivering here to pin 2 uh, a high enough voltage so an arrow voltage then uh, you know this uh, IC is simply switching off uh, the oscillation and then uh, the circuit is in a kind of self-protection yeah, and here briefly our block diagram of uh, our oscillator um, IC or pulse width modulator however you want to call it so just briefly here uh, is uh, our output uh, which uh, is at least uh, the um, driving um, signal to our to our uh, transistor okay and uh, here here we have our arrow amp and if we are exceeding uh, a dedicated voltage here at our input of the arrow amp then we are switching uh, off the uh, output power and looking here into the data I don't want uh, to confuse you but this is here the arrow amp uh, section and what you uh, can see here yeah uh, our 
output voltage is uh, available um, up to 2.3 uh, volt at pin 2 right and uh, the output voltage at pin 6 is low if we are exceeding exceeding uh, 2.7 volt so then uh, the uh, power arrow amplifier is reporting there is a too high load and then you know uh, the uh, output here is uh, switched to low so that means there is no oscillation and uh, then uh, it is uh, the circuit is protecting uh, itself okay so what uh, does it mean uh, briefly so uh, without load we will have of course here at uh, the uh, cathode uh, voltage and uh, if we uh, have a load uh, then you know the uh, input here will uh, be reduced a little bit and uh, the output uh, voltage of uh, our precision Zener diode will uh, go down a little bit and uh, that means that uh, this uh, LED so um, yeah this is um, to illuminate uh, at least here our transistor or phototransistor and uh, if uh, this uh, LED is getting uh, brighter inside uh, this uh, package then the resistor will get uh, lower and uh, then you know we get a higher voltage to pin 2 which is uh, our our arrow amp and uh, the voltage itself comes out or off here um, pin 8 of our IC and pin 8 is the internal uh, reference uh, voltage of 5 volt so internal reference voltage which will be supplied here to our transistor and uh, if this transistor is going to low resistance which will happen if we have a bright internal uh, LED then this voltage can uh, directly pass through and uh, then you will have a high uh, voltage or higher voltage than 2.7 uh, volt as indicated in our data sheet that the arrow amp uh, becomes active and will reduce here the uh, output uh, power um, here from our pin 6 to our transistor so that is how it is uh, briefly working okay so pin 8 is uh, here so let's uh, check uh, what we have at uh, pin 8 so that uh, should be our internal uh, 5 volt uh, reference and uh, yeah let's uh, have a look to our meter where's the meter there so pin 8 is reporting 5 volt which uh, is at least here our reference uh, voltage which uh, is needed uh, to feed our optocoupler and uh, if you know uh, there is um, a high load uh, at uh, the output uh, terminal maybe a short or whatever then this reference uh, voltage will uh, feed through our optocoupler which is here so that is our optocoupler will feed through the optocoupler to pin 2 uh, which is our arrow amplifier and will then finally switch off our IC to protect the circuit okay okay and uh, down here this little guy here this is our precision Zener diode and uh, yeah, we uh, want to check out uh, what's uh, uh, happening if uh, there um, is load connected to the output terminal and uh, what uh, will happen if uh, the load uh, is too high, so maybe a short. So what uh, will be at uh, the cathode and uh, I will uh, connect it here now to um, the cathode 
and uh, now my probe is uh, directly uh, probing uh, the cathode. So let's uh, have a look here uh, to our... Uh, that is not very professional, sorry for that. Um, at uh, pin 3, which is a cathode of our uh, precision uh, thinner diode and without load. So without load means we have this scope picture. We have at least at our uh, cathode 4 volt, which means that uh, the optocoppler um, LED is not that much bright. Okay, but if the voltage at uh, our um, at our cathode is going down, then um, we uh, have a higher uh, voltage difference between anode and cathode, and uh, the LED in the optocoupler is getting brighter, and that means the resistor of our transistor inside the optocoupler, the phototransistor, uh, is uh, going to a lower resistor and then uh, we get a higher error voltage which will finally lead to a point where the IC is switching off the transistor. Okay? Okay, so let's monitor the voltage at our um, precision thinner diode, so we have 4 volt, um, and uh, that means uh, normal. Uh, we, we have no load at the moment, but now I will switch on my electronic load, and uh, that means that uh, the output voltage will drop a little bit, and uh, that means that uh, here this voltage will go down because of course uh, the reference input will get a lower voltage as well. So let me switch it on and yeah you see now uh, our power supply is delivering power and you see uh, now uh, the voltage dropped and that means um, that uh, we clearly see load. And now let me increase uh, the load at uh, my uh, electronic load. And uh, yeah, I will increase it. And when I increase it, this here should drop a little more. And you can see uh, what is happening. It is dropping. And now I will increase it more and more and more. And you will see uh, at a point when uh, the arrow voltage is getting too high, we get uh, a pumping effect, which we have already here. And yeah, let me go back. This is now much easier to uh, understand uh, if we see the picture on our scope. So here is our scope uh, picture and you see that uh, uh, we uh, have a load already and now I'm increasing the load and you see uh, the duty cycle is getting wider and now I'm at a point where our circuit is in self-protection and you see uh, the transistor is uh, switched off, so there is no energy transferred to the output and uh, yeah, you can't really hear it because uh, that is a little bit uh, difficult, but uh, yeah, it is always switching off and then a soft start again trying uh, is it now back okay or what's going on, but you clearly see that uh, now this uh, power supply is in a uh, protection mode. Yeah, and that uh, is at least, you know, the basic um, function of uh, a switch mode uh, power supply. And uh, of uh, course, there are many, many variants. Um, you know, there are so 
many uh, different uh, uses for uh, these uh, power supplies, but uh, I think the basic idea is uh, always the same. So we want to increase uh, the frequency in our uh, transformer to get uh, more power transferred with a smaller uh, transformer so that makes it uh, cheaper in uh, production uh, the product itself uh, will be cheaper uh, the power supply will be smaller it is light so you don't have a heavy beast and uh, so therefore the basic idea is uh, always uh, the same also we have really many different uh, variants of how uh, a power supply like uh, this can be designed but um, well I hope that uh, you um, got a basic idea of uh, how um, it is working okay one additional um, information why this um, yeah, switch mode uh, power supplies have that uh, bad uh, reputation. So if these power supplies do not have uh, this uh, common mode filter, right, then, um, or let me say it uh, the other way around, this uh, common mode filter down here, so the purpose is that uh, this common mode filter has to reduce or suppress the 56 uh, kilohertz which is uh, swinging here inside and uh, this uh, 50 kilohertz or 100 kilohertz or whatever uh, never should go back into uh, our line um, yeah in, in our power supply line backwards because then if uh, this uh, 50 or 100 kilohertz or whatever this circuit is designed to is able to go uh, backwards into our uh, mains then we uh, have this uh, 50 or 100 kilohertz uh, all over our power network in the house and uh, then all the wiring will be a big antenna and uh, will of course transmit this uh, frequency and then you have all this noise and uh, all this distortion we know this uh, ah, you, 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 you definitely have uh, heard it already um, on your radio when there is a switching supply uh, which uh, is faulty or simply completely missing this uh, common mode uh, filter but with a good common mode filter like uh, in here so there is no way uh, for this 50 uh, what what have we 56 kilohertz so there is no way for this uh, 56 uh, kilohertz to go backwards here into uh, the line and therefore this power supply does not produce produce any distortion or uh, any harm um, in our radios because it is nicely protected protected against uh, this distortion simply by using this uh, common mode uh, filter what uh, which is not only this uh, filter but mostly uh, but uh, uh, additional to that we we have this filter capacitors down here which uh, all together is this uh, common mode uh, filter which uh, is then able to filter out all this distortion well okay that uh, is it for today i mean uh, we were definitely not able to cover um, everything because uh, it is uh, really complex but uh, well i uh, leave it at uh, that point um, i just uh, want to remind you once again that uh, you should not do what uh, I've done here if you do not really know what you are doing please use a good isolation transformer 
um, which is really isolate, isolating the earth from your uh, secondary side, so that is very important. And uh, you have seen that I have connected my uh, scope here to this circuit. My scope uh, is also connected uh, via uh, a second isolation transformer that uh, you know uh, I cannot mix up the both earths. Uh, so that is very important so you can really ru ruin your day um, if you uh, do not know uh, what you are doing. You, so you can simply blow your scope. You can uh, you know, uh, get uh, an electrical uh, shock if you do something wrong. So therefore, let me remind you to use all um, the yeah the security uh, aspects that uh, nothing uh, can uh, happen to you or to you or your um, lab equipment. So be careful and uh, really don't do it uh, if you do not know what uh, you are doing here. Okay, so let us leave it uh, at that point. Hope um, it was uh, of any value for you and uh, I hope that uh, now you have a little bit um, understanding of uh, what a, uh, a switch mode power supply is doing, how it is working and uh, yeah, what is finally the advantage and yeah, if you like it, please give me a big uh, thumb up for this video and catch you next time. Bye!